Let's take a look at how we can create some event handlers and wire them up to some different controls. So first, we're going to start off by using the event handling solution, which is in the folder called Begin for this module. Once you load that up, you're going to see a main page, and there'll be a list view here with some hard-coded values for John, Papa, Dan, Wally, and Pluralsight. First thing we're going to do is take a look at the top control, which is a toggle switch. Now here we've got a toggle switch control, and we've got a name for it called toggle list, and it has a property called off content. We're going to label it with basic list and on content of template. And what this toggle switch is going to do is when we toggle it from off to on, we're going to basically change the list view below from the list view we see, which is the basic list, to a different list, which is going to use more templated look with some pictures in it. So let's start off first by adding our second list view. Now, first thing we can do is select our stack panel, go back to the toolbox, and we will add the list view by double clicking. So we'll go down here and it should have added the list view as the bottom element. We can then move that up either by moving the XAML or let's just drag it up above the other list view. And then here we can name that list view, call it people list view two. And then once we do that, we now have a second list view right above people list view one. But instead of typing all that in, we really just want to go grab some code that we have. And if you go out to your folder for event handling in the begin folder, you'll see people list view two. And we're going to grab all the code that generates another list view, which is a little bit nicer looking than list view one. We're actually going to replace the list view two that we put in here and paste in list view two, the new version. So here we should have in our document view, we open this guy up a little, we can see people list view two and it's a little bit more involved than people list view one was. Now sometimes the designer doesn't generate right away, so we can see people list view one was still there, people list view two is not showing. What I'm simply going to do is close the designer and reopen it and it should re-render everything just fine. There we go. So here is people list view two and we can see we've got pictures here for Dan and a hyperlink for his Twitter ID. And then down below we have the old list view. So a couple of things we can do to just toggle things around in the designer is we can actually click the eyeball over here and hide list view one if we want to. And let me show it to you real quick. So we can see list view one is visible. Now it's not. So let's make them both shown again. This is actually just toggling a design time property, not toggling the actual properties on the control. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to set the people list view two to be collapsed. Now we can type that in the XAML over here, or we could go over to the properties. Let's do it the easy way. And we'll toggle it to collapsed, and now we can see that it's actually gone. So it's hidden in the collapsed state. What we're going to do is when it's in the basic list, we want to show the original list view. When we go to the templated list, we want to go to the nicer formatted one. So next up, we have to add an event handler. Let's select our toggle control here, our toggle switch, and let's go over and we can add an event handler by typing in the XAML, or we can go to the events, and then we can come down to the toggled event, and we'll double click on it, and it'll actually generate the code for us. So the first thing it did is it created in the XAML a declarative event handler declaration. And then it went over into the code behind and added the actual event handler for me. So now we have to type in the syntax for what we want to do if the particular control is available. So here is the control toggle list and we're going to say if the toggle list is toggled on we want to perform an action. Otherwise we're going to perform another action. And basically what we're going to do is go and type in people list view one dot visibility so if it turns on, we're going to say that we want to set the visibility for number one to collapsed. So we'll say visibility collapsed. And we'll copy and paste to save some time. And we want to set visibility to number two to visible. And I'm using my IntelliSense because it makes it a little easier. Copy and paste, and I'll just flip for the other condition to the opposite. So basically we said if the toggle list is on, we're going to set the visibility for the collapsed view to be the old one and the nicer looking list view will become visible and then if it's off conversely it'll look the other way. So what we did here is we have an event handler wired up it's got some parameters being passed in which we're not making use of at this particular time and we're looking at the value of that particular control. Now let's add some other event handlers too and we'll create now a selection changed event on people list view too. So remember we don't see it here but it's inside of our document outline. So here's people list view two. So we could add it by going the way we did before, 
We click on the event and we go down to the selection change and we can double click. But this time let's actually go back to the code and let's add the event handler this way. So here, let's go ahead and type in people list view two dot selection changed with plus equals and it's going to give us IntelliSense here to say if we hit tab, it's going to insert the event handler syntax for the selection changed handler. So here we can see generated the handler for us and it's got two parameters, object of a sender and then selection changed event args. Now all we want to do in this particular case is we're going to call a method and we'll call it you changed it. And then we'll type in a method here called private async void you changed it. And what this method is going to do is basically just prompt us with a message box saying that, hey, something has changed in this particular case. We're not going to grab the values out at this time. We'll save that for the next lab, which is getting into data. So here we're going to create a message box, a message dialog, part of the Windows APIs. And we're going to say the selection changed. And then we're going to say await dialog.showAsync. And that should be good to go. So here, in this case, what we actually did is we used an async method called you changed it, which is going to then run off and run the async message dialog. Now, the way I know this is an async message is because the dialog has a show async method. If I click here quickly, I don't see any show method. That means it only runs asynchronously. And therefore, the way I need to run this is by sticking the await keyword before it. And we'll get into more of that later on in the other courses, for example. But in this particular one, we'll just use the async example here. So now that we have our event handler in place, let's go try to run this. And we come back over here, we should be able to press run. Hopefully it'll compile and build perfectly. And then we should see list view one, the original one here, up in place. And I can select John Papa or Dan Wallin. And notice the event handler is not firing for the selection because we didn't wire it to this particular list view. We only did it to the other one. When I click on the basic list, the toggle event handler should fire and it should switch from one list view to the other. And here's the better looking list view we have. And when I select an item in here, it should now say selection changed using the message dialog. So we can see here in this example how we wired up two different kinds of event handlers. One of them we were using by doing it declaratively through the design tools where we double clicked inside the properties for the event itself to generate the toggle event. And then the other way was to go inside the code behind and actually wire it in through code by using the plus equal syntax.